Hello there and welcome to a bit of a strange review today. We have the G66 by Lenovo, also known as the Mini Station. You guys are probably not aware of this. I wasn't aware of this until just a few weeks ago. And this was a Korean development back in 2015. It was made by some guys called Tencent and Lenovo. I'm sure you've heard of Lenovo before. And it was a collaboration between Tencent OS and Lenovo. Unfortunately, it was only aimed at the Korean market and... We never saw it here in the West. I don't think so as far as I'm aware. Anyway, let's take a look at this. I'm going to show you just how weird this device is and how these guys have handled this. Because if you're not aware, that Tencent OS went bust in the middle of 2017. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Let's review this product. Let's see how good it is. Let's see how much of a cock up Lenovo we've actually made. My name's Matthew and you're watching another review by the MXQ Project. So let's unbox it. It's got a lot of packaging on this device. It's got this first little bit of sort of cardboard. We're going to take that off and it kind of gives you an idea of what is the specifications on the device. Then we can remove the actual packaging and here we have the actual Lenovo G66. It's actually a mini station, but they've rebranded it to G66 to appeal to us guys in the West rather than the Korean market that it was originally aimed for. Now, it's it's quite a really unique device. It looks really good. I really do like the actual design of it. There's no other TV box on the market that, you know, we can see that. We've we've only got a small amount of connectivity. We've, got, we've obviously got the standard. We've got one USB port. We've got the HDMI as well as the, just, you know, a basic sort of, um, you know, set of uh, connectivity, really. I'm really quite disappointed. That, you know, the size of this thing, you'd expect to get a few you know a few more ports in there at least so the rest of the box contains a few little bits and pieces as you normally get loads of different packaging on this all this cardboard here which is utterly pointless just a waste but there we go and we've got the remote here it's a 2.4 g remote so it's not the standard ir remote and it will be built with it and it won't need to be you know it will work seamlessly with it, I, will, I, will, I hope anyway. I'm not going to use it because there's not a lot of buttons on this thing. I'm just going to use my standard, you know, QWERTY keyboard IR. Not IR remote, it's a 2.4G remote. And I'm just going to use that with it. And finally, we just get this um, uh, HDMI cable. You know, the standard sort of thing. So anyway, let's move on now. Let's take a look at the G66 slash mini station. So welcome to the original firmware for this Lenovo. This was originally called the Mini Station, and they have decided to change it to the G66. I reckon just to get rid of this old stock. I reckon a couple of big companies like Gearbest and so on have just bought up this stock and fired some really simple firmware on there to be aimed at the Western market, like me in the UK, you guys, maybe in America or some other Western country. And basically, they've just aimed just to get rid of this stock. It's quite an expensive device. It's £50. So, unfortunately, as we go through this review, you're going to be somewhat disappointed. I'm very disappointed because this hardware is amazing. So, what you're watching now is the original firmware. This is um, a Korean sort of setup. It's all in Korean. And, yeah, I can't read it, unfortunately. But just from, you know playing around with it just a little bit this firmware seems to be really really good it was developed by a company called tencent as i mentioned at the start tencent's quite a big company it's a big tech company and they had a little one little sort of division and they were developing custom firmware and what they did was they teamed up with lenovo to produce this device and originally it was called the mini station and it was kind of like a you know, a gamer's sort of device. It was aimed at gamers. You could have multiple pe people connecting to it with mobile phones, joypads, and stuff like that. And that was the kind of aim. I, I guess it was kind of like a NVIDIA Shield, I guess, if you want to call it that. Nowhere near as powerful, of course, but the Rock Chip 3.2 in here was really really quite good for the time it was one of the fastest processes by these sort of chinese developers chinese companies back then and it was released in 2014 i think it was this particular rock chip processor and it was quite beefy and it still is today and it and it you know you kind of get that kind of um impression when you're just playing around with the actual firmware that was developed to run on this device now unfortunately even so 
it's developed for games. Unfortunately, I couldn't get anything running on this. I couldn't get like Asphalt 8 or anything like that running on this. Obviously, games have come a long way since since this firmware was developed. And because Tencent OS went bust in the middle of 2017, clearly we we're not going to get any updates for this, and we're stuck on KitKat. Now, this is the KitKat firmware, and we had to hunt down this. We went all over the internet trying to find this and we finally found one link and it and it took us a good while to actually figure out how to download it because it was going to take about five to ten days to actually download this firmware using this link it was one of those sort of links that require you to pay and stuff like that just to get a little bit of money out of you to actually download it and it was the only source we could find for this particular firmware we just wanted to see if this was any improvement of the firmware we are now seeing on this Lenovo G66. They renamed it, rebranded it and stuff like that. I never stuck it on there. We just wanted to see if there was any improvement. Obviously, it's still KitKat, so it's not lollipop as you get when you buy this product from, say, Gearbest or whatever. It's, you know, KitKat. But we still, you know, we wanted to see if it was an improvement. And it is. It's a massive improvement. And, you know, it really, you know, makes this hardware shine, basically. Unfortunately, it's on Korean. I don't understand a word of it, and it. But just by looking at it, it looks really good. And you know, unfortunately, games aren't very good on it. But the games that I did get to play on it, like this Sonic, you know, emulation, it runs just great. It runs absolutely fine. It's nice and smooth, and so on. And just playing through the menus, you know, YouTube playback and stuff like that is really good. And overall, yeah, a really quite impressive piece of firmware. For its age, anyway, you know, we're talking back in 2015 when this product was originally launched. Anyway, let's move on now. I want to show you the actual firmware you get on this device. This is running Lollipop 5.1.1, I think it is. And, yeah, it's such a disappointment, massive disappointment. So when we load it up, this is the launcher. You guys have seen this launcher I've seen this launcher and it's nothing special. It's nothing like the actual 10 cent OS launchers. You you know, you got two launchers on there, the mini station launcher and another one called HD Play, I think it was called. Obviously aimed at Korea. Uh, I think it's it will be obviously the southern South Korea it's aimed at, and you know, it's nothing compared to that launcher. It's just garbage, unfortunately. For the price of it anyway, because you know, £50 is a lot of money to pay for a TV box and you could get such a better device for that sort of money. To hell with this. I mean, it's a lollipop as well and lollipop's getting old now. It's ages. You know, we're starting to see it's age. Anyway, I've done a few tests on this. So we've done some Wi-Fi. This device comes with dual-band Wi-Fi, and it's all right. It's got a good connection speed for standard 2.4G. It's 144 MP. S, which is really good, you know, but you know, it's about standard. The download speed wasn't great when actually using it, but it was about average, so you know, not bad. As well as that, it's got dual band Wi Fi, so you've got the 2.4G and the 5G as well. Now, the gameplay on this, unfortunately, Assault 8 would not run at all again. It just seems to be some issue with Game Off games and rock chip processors. I can never seem to get game uh, game off games running on these sort of boxes but there we go it might just it might just be some incompatibility somewhere just like it wouldn't run 10 cent os when originally obviously that 10 cent os is aimed at gamers you know this device is built for that anyway we we managed to get this like sort of broken down version of uh, asphalt that you know game off make and it runs fine unfortunately joypads wasn't really, you know, in, interacting with the device very well. I've got an Xbox 360 joypad wired one here, and it wasn't working at all. It, it kind of tried to, you know, we could get the sort of the start menu up and stuff like that, but unfortunately, I couldn't control the car with it. And this is just a broken down version of what we what we would call asphalt eight, I guess. So YouTube playback, video playback, unfortunately, it's it's. It's all right. He manages 1080p and he can play back a few videos if you want to. Unfortunately, this isn't a very good YouTube app. It's just a standard sort of mobile phone YouTube app. It's not the actual YouTube TV, which I really enjoy using. Now, overall, the firmware is about standard. It's nothing special. Unfortunately, there's a lot of issues with this firmware, such as it's not really designed for TV boxes. It's kind of just like stock Android and there's no tweaks being made. Everything's sort of zoomed out. It's obviously designed for a mobile phone screen 
and this is kind of stretched so it just looks really really awful i've tried to play around with some of the display settings to improve things and you know make the you know the text bigger and stuff like that but again it's not improved things at all very well but there we go that's just to expect from what i feel is that Lenovo have got this massive stockpile of stock they can't shift because Tencent OS has went bust. They've got no one to develop the firmware for them. So they've just flogged it to the likes of Gearbest, said, go and get a developer, make some quick firmware for this box, fire it on there, and just sell them as quickly as you can. And I believe that's what's happening here. It's a massive shame. This hardware in this box will be amazing. Look, it's made by Lenovo. They're not going to skimp on components. Everything's going to be really good. The, ha the actual device is nice and heavy and it just feels really well made and it looks the part. I mean, look at this device. There's no other TV box on the market that looks quite like this. It's a really unique design and I love it. I love the way it looks and it's fantastic. It so in conclusion, what is going on with this product? Lenovo have clearly just got bored of it. They've not wanted to further develop it. Clearly, they've got no one else to help them with it. Tencent OS went bust in the middle of 2017. And what's ended up is a, a really good piece of hardware with some lousy firmware. That firmware is really letting this box down, so I can't recommend it at all. Unless someone comes along and picks it up and develops it further, because this hardware is capable of so much more. Anyway, I really hope you like this review. It kind of gives you an insight into what manufacturers do sometimes. They rebrand products, sell it in different parts of the world and see what happens. And clearly, in this, in this case, this product has failed somewhere because of that failure within Tencent OS. They've picked it up, gave it to another company and said, look, can you sell it somewhere else, such as the West, in the UK, America, and so on. And that's the way it is sometimes, unfortunately. Thanks for watching, guys. My name's Matthew, and you've been watching another review by the MQ Project. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That helps us a huge amount, guys. And I would re really appreciate it if you do that. As well as that, check out the website, mxqproject.com, Facebook group, Twitter, at MXQProject, and we shall see you very, very soon.